Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper chairs the National Governors Association with Utah Governor Gary Herbert serving as vice chair. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Um, the, the economic story has many parts, but the three big ones are um, for our retailers and hospitality businesses, Main Street businesses, restaurants, it's been a really grim month of February. And many of those businesses, um, they're not quite hand to mouth, but a lot of them are the kinds of places where if people don't come in and buy, nobody gets paid. And uh, I think the consequences of you know, eight and a half feet of snow in three weeks and the number of days lost um, for those kinds of operations has been profound. Now, the working group we put together is a collection of experts. We're not expecting them to spend a year and a half because they don't need to developing a set of strategies and policies. Our goal here is every 30 to 60 days to have them recommend another set of things we could be doing within the current statutory frameworks we have. And if at some point toward the end of the spring or the early part of the summer they say, you know what, there's a couple things we'd really like to do statutorily, we'll be more than happy to file statutes and legislation based on their interests and their objectives. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. We're going to be an open door administration. Um, even when we don't agree, we're going to try not to be disagreeable. Um, and most importantly, whether it's energy or health care or innovation or education or transportation or snow removal, um, we want to work with you to be successful here. You thought you were done with the snow jokes. Oh but, my God! This is actually going to be that is so funny. A way for you to remember. Oh. <laughs> so just to commemorate your start of your uh, one or two terms, whatever it happens to be. But there you are in the state house with all the snow flying around. <laughs> we appreciate. We appreciate it. That's a winner. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. We need to educate our kids and our young adults in a way so that they can take those jobs and be qualified to perform them. And we need to have training programs that meet the skills that our employers are seeking for the 21st century. Uh, we will examine, um, as this cabinet, an alignment between our education, workforce, and economic systems against job growth and higher demand in each region and each state, um, across the state and through our, through our sectors. <laughs> So one of the things we d announced yesterday was the creation of a workforce skills gap cabinet, which is made up of, not surprisingly, our Secretary of Education, our Secretary of Economic Affairs, and our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development. They are going to work quickly to put together a set of goals and metrics um, and tasks, and then dive into building uh, a far more aggressive and focused and precise effort to make sure that what we're doing with all of our workforce development and training activities and what we're doing with our career and technical schools and what we're doing with our K-12 institutions and our community colleges is actually going to translate into employment for people when they come out the other end of this. And one of the things that Secretary Pizer, who's the Secretary of Education, said yesterday, he said, this one really at this point, it is a lot less about policy and a lot more about follow-through execution, collaboration, and coordination. And I agree with them on that one. And I can tell you that we are going to focus aggressively on this because it kills me to be out there talking to people in one part of a community who are having trouble finding work, paying their bills, feeding their family, and then be in some other part of that community and running into employers who are saying to me, I'm not looking to hire rocket scientists. I just need people with a certain level of skill um, and we can take it from there and having such a hard time filling those jobs. We have got to make Massachusetts a place where those kinds of conversations simply don't happen.